Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering this simple smoke or steam effect using Niagara particles. Today I'm working in 4.27 but this will work in 5 early access and should work in versions below 4.27 as long as you're using Niagara as most of the things that we're doing are held inside the material not the actual particle system. But before we get started I just want to say thank you to Wingfox for sponsoring today's video. I'm proud to be partnering with Wingfox who are sponsoring today's video. Wingfox is a fantastic online learning platform filled with courses covering a variety of topics across multiple different industries. All of their courses are assigned a level of difficulty, which means there are courses spanning beginner to professional levels. Wingfox even have a collection of courses for Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. A couple of my favourite courses are the Stylized 3D Cottage and Create a Hack and Slash Game Prototype. The environments of the stylized cottage are gorgeous and would pair well with some of my stylized VFX tutorials, and the hack and slash game covers all the details you'll need to set up your hero character and have them fighting an AI driven boss. Before buying a course you can take a look at all of the courses details and contents to see exactly what you'll be doing, you can even take a look at the discussions current students are having. The best part is, once you've purchased the course you have lifetime access so you can learn at your own pace and you can come back to it as many times as you want. Right now over Christmas and New Year, Wingfox are having a sale and you can use the code WF25 at the checkout to get an additional 25% off your order. A huge thank you to Wingfox for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need are two textures. I have two different versions of clouds here. I have clouds one and clouds three, which is uh, not confusing at all. Um, these are just render clouds in Photoshop, just two varieties of them. If you have Photoshop, you can quickly just make those. If you don't have Photoshop available, you can find these in the description below. There'll be a link to get these files. Okay, so first we're going to make our material. We're going to right click material M underscore smoke. And before we open that up, we're just going to take a quick look at these particles. So you can see here we're getting some nice wavy distortion in here. And it looks quite nice. Um, now we're not doing anything with any sort of sub UV texture. This is just our clouds. Uh, what we're doing is we are using a world aligned texture and we're running that through a flow map. So let's open this up. Drag that over from the other screen. Stretch this out. We're going to grab both of our textures and drag those in for reference and just maximize this screen. And now we're just gonna change from opaque to translucent so we can see through this like we would be able to with steam or smoke. First thing we'll do then is we will set up our world aligned texture. So we're gonna take our clouds three or just any version of your clouds texture if you've made your own, right click this, convert this to a texture object and then drag from the pin and grab a world aligned texture, there it is. And what this is going to do is it's going to project our texture onto a world aligned UV set and it's going to repeat that 0 to 1 um, UV space depending on the texture size that we plug into the texture size pin. We want to be able to control this inside of our particle so we're going to use our trusty dynamic parameters to give us control over this. We're going to plug param1 into the texture size and we'll just change the name of this to noise size. The next thing that we're going to do is get this ready to be used inside of our flow map. So because we are using uh, sprites that are just going to face the camera, we actually only need the X and the Y coordinates here, or the R and the G. So we're going to drag out from X, Y, and then we're going to multiply this by a value which will control how strong this will be pushed into our flow maps. So from our dynamic parameter, we're going to name the second, uh, second parameter our noise amount, there we are, and we're just going to drag that into the multiply. From this we want our flow map, but for our flow map we're going to use our second texture just so we get some variety in here and we're going to convert this to a texture object. And from the pin we are going to select flow maps simple. There we are, and now we've got the diffuse is the texture object and we want to take our multiplier and plug this into the flow vector map. And just so that we make sure that our UVs are fine, we're just going to hold U and left click for a texture coordinate and plug this into the UVs here. 
Now, one other thing that we're going to do is we're just going to try to offset these a little bit um, and make them all look a little bit different so they're not all following the same pattern of flow. So what we'll do, again, dynamic parameter, the third thing is going to be our noise offset, which we'll plug into the time value on the flow map symbol. Now that we have that sorted, we're going to go ahead and get this ready to be used with another texture. We're going to get a copy of our first texture here, and we're just going to convert this back to a texture sample. We'll plug a UV texture coordinate into the UV, so hold U and left click to get that back. Plug that into the UVs. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to control how bright or dark this is. So we'll hold E and left click for a power, and we're going to take just the red value. We just need one of the channels here and we'll plug that into the base and for the exponent we have one parameter left on our trusty dynamic parameter this is going to be our smoke power and we'll drag this and plug that into the exponent cool now what we need to do is we need to get this ready uh, we do not want a full square of smoke we want just a circle so luckily we can right click radial gradient and the radial gradient is just going to draw us a circle, white in the middle, black on the edge, and we can use this as a mask. So hold M and left click for a multiply, take the power, plug that in, take the radial gradient, plug that in. And now if we were to go ahead and preview this on a plane, you can see now we've cut the edges off all nice and tidy. Now you'll see we don't have any distortion, but if we do zoom in, we might be able to see some of the very, very small numbers because we haven't put any numbers into our dynamic parameter yet we probably won't see anything so let's stop previewing this really quick and what we want to do now is of course we won't we haven't plugged it in haha -ha, that's what we're doing next we're going to hold m and left click for a multiply we're going to plug in our radial gradient and from our flow map simple we just want one channel so we'll drag out from the diffuse we're going to comp mask this take just the red and we're going to plug this red into the multiply with the radial gradient. And now when we start previewing this, we'll be able to see some noise in there. There you go. If you zoom in, you'll see this repeating. There we are, because it's currently just a size of one by one. So it's very, very small, but we'll fix that inside of the particle system. Now that we have that multiply, what we are going to do is we're just going to clamp this value just to make sure it doesn't go too far beyond what we want. And we're just going to clamp this to say 0.6, so 0 to 0.6. And now we want our final controls for inside of the particle system. So we want our particle color node, and we're going to plug the color pin into the base color and the emissive. We're going to hold M and left click for a multiply, take the alpha, multiply that by a previous clamp. And then just because we don't want to see the smoke ever cutting into our floors or walls or any other objects, we're going to use a depth fade, which will allow this to fade out more if the particle is near an opaque surface. So hold M and left click for a multiply. And we'll just multiply those together and then stick that into the opacity. And now we should just have barely visible smoke. And if we zoom in, we can still see all the noise. That's fine. Apply and save. And now we have our uh, materials. The next thing that we want to do then is set up our particle system. So right click, effects, Niagara system. Uh, we'll just say next, we're going to go to the fountain plus finish ns underscore smoke. What we'll do is we'll just move over and we'll just drop this into the world. There we are. So by default, we're just going to get this regular fountain that's just spraying these dots. We're going to open this up. And what we will do is Select our sprite renderer first, and under the material, we're just going to change this to our smoke. Now, we don't want these to fall. This is our smoke, so we want this to rise, so gravity force can go away. The velocity and cone, we are also going to get rid of that because we don't really want this to just be a cone. The sphere location, we can always get rid of as well. Okay, so the spawn rate here, uh, we're actually going to set this to something lower than what the default value is for the fountain. We're going to set this down to 20. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're initializing the particle properly. Uh, so we'll go to the initialize particle. And things that we want to do here are things like setting up their lifetimes and their sizes. So the first thing we'll do is their lifetimes. 
in my example, we have a minimum lifetime of two and a maximum lifetime of four. So these things will live between four, uh, between two and four seconds. The color, we're going to set that up afterwards. I will show you how we've done this. Uh, and the next thing we want to do is our uh, sprite attributes, sprite size. We want the random uniform and we want to set these to much bigger. So 60 to 100 will be fine for those. Now you can see we're getting much larger sprites. If we look at them in the world, they're quite big now. Cool. So the next thing that we'll do then is we will actually add in our velocity and our velocity is just going to be uh, an upwards force and then a little bit to one direction. So that's simulating some sort of wind. So we're going to say add velocity and let's just maximize this real quick so we can see this properly. With our velocity here, we're just going to click the little drop down or if you're on five, it will be a little picture of some chain links. You can click that and we're going to set this to a random ranged vector and we're just going to make sure this is going up. So we'll say minimum of 100 in the Z. Uh, we don't want anything in the X's for now, so we'll just get rid of that and 200 in the maximum for the Z. So you can see now these are flying upwards and we're just going to make them blow ever so slightly in the Y. So 10 minimum, 20 maximum in the Y and now they'll move ever so slightly sideways as well. Now that we have the base velocity, we're going to try and get these things um, sticking together a little bit more by using the drag. We are just going to increase the default drag value to 0.5 and that's just going to hold them together a little bit better and slow them down quicker. Next, we want these to be fading uh, both in and out. So particle update, we're going to use a color. Like so. In fact, no, we'll use scale color because we don't want to override the color. We need that later. We need scale color. There we are. And what we'll do is with the scale alpha, we're just going to drop down menu, add a curve, and we're going to grab our first point and set that value down to zero. And then we want to right click with the key selected and we want to add a key. This one, we are going to give this uh, not a full value. We're going to set this to 0 0.1 uh, in the time and 0 0.5 for the actual alpha there. And now they will fade in and then fade out as they go back down towards zero at the end of their life. So now we're getting this nice fade. The next thing that we want to do, oh, we already had a scale color, get rid of that. There we are. Didn't spot that just sitting there, cheeky thing. Okay, now we've just got our one scale color and it's scaling our alpha properly. We are next going to just handle the sizing. So we're going to press the plus on particle update and we're going to say scale sprite size. And in this instance, we're pretty much getting what we want. It's starting at nothing and then growing, but we actually want to grow it ever so slightly beyond its base of value. So we're going to grab the final key here and set the second value to two, and then they're going to grow to twice their initial size. So now we're getting this nice spread towards the top. When it's still not getting the wavy stuff because we haven't set that up yet, but we will fix that shortly. The final thing that we want to do just on making sure that this looks like a plume of smoke is we just want to give this some rotation. And the reason we're going to give it rotation is just so that they are spinning ever so slightly and it just helps us break up that pattern. So add a plus and we want our sprite rotation rate. There he is. And under rotation rate, we are just going to give that a random ranged float evaluation type. We want this to be spawn only. If this isn't spawn only, then it's going to get us a new value every frame and they're just going to flicker about. The minimum will say negative 20. The maximum will be 20. So they'll start spinning in two different directions and it's going to be quite subtle, but you can already see that's happening here. Now. You can see them spinning. It's cool. The last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to put in the nice wavy stuff so that we can see them, um, you know, wiggling, I guess. Uh, in the particle update, we're going to press uh, the plus and we're going to grab our dynamic material parameters. You can see here we already have our noise size, noise amount, uh, noise offset and smoke power. And you can see because the smoke power has now been defaulted to zero, we're getting a much thicker plume of smoke. Um, and that's, that's fine. Uh, let's do our noise size first. So what we're going to do with the drop down, random ranged float. And we're actually going to give each of these a its own size of world aligned texture. So we're going to get different amounts 
or different sizes of uh, wobbly flow map inside of each one. Uh, again, we want this to happen on spawn only. We don't want this to happen every frame. And we're going to give this a value of 64 to, say, 256. Keeping that into the power of 2, just so that it's nice and tidy. The noise amount, we're actually going to hold this at a specific value. We're going to hold this at 0.4, just so that we don't get too much wobbling. You can see the wobbling is now occurring. We're getting some nice wiggles in there. Yay! The noise offset is another one that we're going to randomize. So, drop down, random... Ooh, random range float. Uh, we'll leave that on 0 to 1. Uh, this is just going to offset the timing of the flow map for each particle. So now you can see it's breaking those up a little bit more. We're getting less panning in there. And finally, the smoke power with the drop down, we're going to do a uh, random range float uh, between, we don't want 0 because we, we need some in there, otherwise it's going to be totally invisible. We'll put 0.5 to 1 on spawn only. And now we're getting this nice wispy smoke like we have in the example. Now finally, for the color of the smoke, uh, we're going to be using a user parameter. So under parameters, we have user exposed. We're going to press a little plus and we're going to say color, spelled the American way. Boo. No, I'm joking. The linear color there. And we're just going to call this color. I'm going to put the U in there because I'm British. You know how it is. If you spell it without the U, don't you worry about it. Uh, and then we're going to select a uh, blue thing here, which is the actual emitter, uh, the actual system rather. You can see now we have user color and it's set to white by default. This is fine. But if we change this value, you can see it's not going to change our smoke. And the reason it's not changing our smoke is because it's not plugged in. So we'll just cancel this off. We'll select our initialized particle and we're going to drag our user color from the parameters list and pop that onto the color here. Now, if we were to go into the system and change this, we should change the default color. There we go. So we can cancel that down. We can press compile. We can save. We can close that down. We can duplicate this guy by holding alt, dragging him. And we can select each one. We can give it its own color. Now, there is a little bit of a bug or caveat with the color. And I'll show you what that is. We can drag this around. And you can see it's not setting the color. It's just frozen the world. When we let go, say we let go on blue, it will set this to blue. But if we change it again, it won't change okay to change it again you have to actually close that down and reopen it and when you drag again when you let go it will take the first value that you've let go on i don't know why that happens it's just a weird bug with niagara pick it up with epic i guess <laughs> now hopefully it'll be something that does get fixed it's it's one of those things that's really annoying because you, you can't do minor tweaks you have to close it down and then read it bit of a pain but we can set each of these to its own color value. So let's say we get that one like a sign color. There we go. And there we have it. Nice. Super simple smoke. Now this is going to be available on my Patreon if you would like to just download the files without having to make it. Uh, if you've learned anything or if you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, please do like and subscribe. It does help me a lot. And once again, I just want to say a huge thank you to Wingfox for sponsoring today's video. There we are. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.